So we're almost at the end of chapter six now, and we've seen quite a bit of advanced stuff that is going beyond the loops and the variables that we normally use for you know, the simple type of programming. We've also seen the make files, how those can uh, create larger projects where objects are being linked together in the end. So let's um, wrap it up with a few extra bits that also are useful and that we kind of already know. So we've seen already um, strings um, when we were using those in I.O. stream. So strings we were uh, putting out to the console by having the two quotation marks um, uh, before and after a string. And we already saw that really this is an array of characters. So if you have this string over here, which has the character H, E, L, L, O, comma, space, we also know that the string is basically an array that also is having as a last character over here a zero or a slash zero, also in the way it sometimes gets defined. And it therefore doesn't um, have the five characters of hello, the comma, and the space, so seven characters in total, but it has eight, uh, eight characters, the last one being a zero. And this is somewhere in memory that is reserved for us. Now the string um, uh, a class over here and we know now that this is a class because we can instantiate strings of type string. So we have S1, S2, S3, etc. that are uh, instantiations, objects uh, of a class string and these class strings or these um, things can be also instantiated immediately with a constructor. So here we use the default constructor, there are no, no braces. Um, here we use a constructor where we immediately copy the contents of this particular string into the string that S5 uh, holds. Right here, this is um, an initialization, or it looks like an initialization. We have S4, which is a string, and we initialize it straight um, to have uh, the contents hello. Now, this is, however, an operator, which we will see later. Um, so we basically here start with a uh, string, which is uh, undefined at the moment, we don't know really what this holds, and then in the second instance we then copy this, these contents in this particular string. Um, and this way we can assign strings, as in you know the, th the constant strings that we type out in, uh, in our codes, and assign those to particular strings. We can also put those strings um, and uh, type those in from the user input, from the console, and these uh, classes allow also to have operators like the plus operator to be used as a concatenation. So you have S1 is then assigned the values of S4 and you con can concatenate to that the value of S3. Then you concatenate that the, this particular string and then you concatenate to that this particular string. So this plus operator is kind of used and also defined within uh, the string class. Um, and the same for uh, the plus equals operator. Also, that operator is then redefined uh, for the string class. And this way, we basically have all these um, uh, uh, strings that are concatenated, and that will basically return a particular string. I would suggest you could use this at home uh, to see what uh, these strings really allow you to do. And this allows it a little bit more than what we've seen up until now, which is basically just characters, uh, character arrays. A second thing I still wanted to see is files. And files can basically be uh, added with fstream, and by adding string as well, we can, for instance, open files for input or output. Now here, just as with um, the standard input and output from the console, uh, we can have uh, the, the input for a file stream and output for a file stream that we can use um, from the standards namespace. Um, and if we do that, we basically have exactly this again. We can create an input file stream or an output file stream. In this case, we have file copy.cpp as an input file. And as an output file, we have file copy2.cpp. One we open for reading, one we open for writing. And then with the getLine function, which is uh, defined in fstream, we can in that case get the contents of these files line by line. So in this case, this function gets the contents of the input file and puts those in string s 
over here or two defined over here and it does this all the way until this get line uh, reports a false so as long as get line reports a number which is basically i think the number of characters that were gotten into the line that was then put into a string if this is uh, suddenly false so this is not reading anything anymore it gets out of this while loop and returns then the main function back to the operating system and for each line that is uh, gotten that way we basically can output that into the output file so this is not c out of the console that this is outputted to but the string is written back to a second file over here so basically all of this is doing one thing namely it's taking the contents of file copy.cpp and putting them into the contents of file copy2.cpp and by using these constructors over here as such where you immediately give the file name um, to the instance in of if stream and the instance out of off stream you basically have immediately all the information that you need um, and as we've seen already uh, a destructor then is automatically called so the a constructor is called over here, the destructor that allows you to close the file and do all the things that normally are necessary um, is then automatically called because the destructor is then automatically called when uh, exiting the main function. Well, I have one more example here. In this directory, I have one particular CPP file called add comments. This is code, as you can see. So we can look at what this code does. It basically does exactly the same. So we have um, our input file stream, our output file stream. I didn't provide that many um, comments, that's very bad of me. We should have added a lot more comments here. Um, and I have my end line and string uh, things that I need from the namespace. And in my main function, I now have an input file and an output file. And what is in interesting here is that the input file is exactly the file that I'm now viewing. So add comment.cpp is exactly what I'm putting into the executable or uh, what I'm defining as input file. And output file um, is where I'm going to copy things to. So I'm doing exactly the same as we saw in the example, except that I'm not just uh, copying the contents of file one to file two. I'm also adding here uh, an extra line, which is basically the um, a comment saying great code. That's why this file is also called add comment. So in the end, what will happen is that I will open uh, two file streams. One of them is called input file, which is the contents of, uh, which points to the disk uh, and the file called add underscore comment.cpp. And one is output file, which points to the file added underscore common.cpp. Now, if this file does not exist yet, it will be created when you output things to it. So in this while loop, um, so as long as there is a line still to be read from the input file, this is what is happening here, we're putting this line to the output file together with an end line so that uh, the formatting stays the same. And then at the end, we just don't close this. We also output um, great, the string great code uh, to the output file as well and also end there with an end line. So that's what uh, this file does. If we compile this by saying add comment and we add it uh, or we call our executable add comment as well. There we go. If we then execute this, then we suddenly have two um, CPP files, one add comments, which is still the same, whoops, that's the executable, which is still the same as before, right, so, and we have also our added comments, which is also the same as what we had before, it's at the end, however, we have this one extra comment that was added to this. So this is sometimes very useful to modify files, read files with lots of data, and then do something with the contents of those files. So this is something that I wanted to still show you as well, because it could be of interest for you later. Right. And this simple file I.O. allows you to um, not only work in memory and uh, input and output things to the console, but also to use the file system that is to your availability as well. So what have we seen now in this chapter? We've seen, we started with arrays, where we saw that arrays are basically a way of compiling lots of variables of the same type. So in this case, we have uh, lots of variables of long integer type, 
uh, 25 of them, and they're the specialties that they start at 0 and end at 25 minus 1, namely 24. Um, we've seen classes, which is the defining thing in C++ that you normally start with. Um, and we saw a class can hold data as well as functions. Um, and we call those member functions and data members in this case. Um, and we know that we, if we want to write a class, we tend to do this with two different files. One header file, which defines the class behavior, so it doesn't really specify how everything is implemented. Um, and the other class, the CPP class, with the same name, will then basically specify how all the functions that have been defined in the header file are actually implemented. Now, once you have a class, you can basically start using this class, or you can basically start creating variables of the type this class, just as you have uh, um, a variable i of type integer, you can then uh, create a variable frisky of type cat, for instance, as we've seen. Um, and this is basically an instance or an object, um, an instance of a class or an object. And we've seen there that we have constructors and these structures that we can use. Um, and these constructors and these structures basically um, show you or automatically are called as soon as you create an instance of a class or as soon as this instance is destroyed, for instance, by leaving the function where it was uh, constructed. Right. So this uh, wraps up chapter 6.